What's good world, I'm Dave, and in this video I'm gonna share some important things to know before you visit Denver. I visited Denver many years ago and ended up moving here a while back, but while no one told me the things that are in this video, I wish that someone had, so I'm going to do the thing that I wish someone had done for me. Also, if you're looking for things to do or places to eat in and around Denver, I've made a bunch of videos on both, and I'll link to those in the description. So without further ado, here are some things to know before you visit the Mile High City. First, this depends on where you're going and where you're staying, but I would recommend turning off tolls on your navigation app before you get here. Unless you're literally going to miss your flight home or you're going to be late to something that you have tickets for that you absolutely need to get to on time, a lot of times the toll roads really don't make a whole lot of sense. If you're coming from the East Coast, chances are tolls are a regular part of your life. If you're coming from parts of the West Coast, you might not even know that your Google Maps app has a toll setting. Especially if you're staying in the south suburbs or you're driving from the airport, a lot of times your navigation app is going to keep trying to put you on toll roads, which don't save you a ton of time and they end up costing you a good amount of money. We used to run an Airbnb and a lot of our guests would get really frustrated that their app kept taking them on toll roads, maybe to save five or 10 minutes if they weren't driving during rush hour. The toll roads do go super duper fast, but a lot of times it's just generally not worth it and not something that you really want to think about. That being said, on some highways, we do have express lanes where you can pay a couple bucks to just fly past everybody who's sitting in traffic if you're driving during rush hour. So unless you're purposefully driving during rush hour traffic or you just really need to get to the airport fast, turn off tolls in your navigation app, it'll probably end up saving you a few bucks while you're here. One of the best parts about living in or visiting Denver is that we're a pretty casual city. You can pretty much wear what you want and feel pretty comfortable wherever you want to go. Unless you're going out out or to a super, super fancy restaurant or bar, pretty much whatever you're wearing is going to be acceptable, which is very, very convenient when you're traveling. And it's not like LA or New York where even your casual has to look cool. Really, whatever you're wearing is probably fine. In general, it's kind of hard to stand out. In fact, if you're super dressed up and you're wearing your designer everything, you might be the one who feels uncomfortable and stands out here. People here give a lot of love to like your Patagonia fleece, but very few people here are going to recognize your designer bag or give your expensive watch the love that its price tag might make you think it deserves. So feel free to wear your joggers and sneakers, your hat and your jeans, whatever you want to wear, probably fine. If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a like to help more people learn about Denver. Now back to the video. Next, Denver is an awesome place to visit during summer. A lot of people come here during the winter time because of skiing and snowboarding and just what people think Colorado is like, but summer is actually a really great time to come visit the city. Throughout the year, we get about 300 days of sun, which is about the same as San Diego. We do occasionally get snow in June, but it's pretty much sunny throughout the year. Our weather is pretty much the opposite of Seattle. We have very few gray days. There's not a lot of moisture in the air. It's actually very dry you'll probably have the biggest boogers of your life when you're visiting Denver. Also, another good part is that when we get snow, which is fairly often, it's usually of the drier, fluffier variety and not that really wet, heavy stuff that you're used to seeing on the East Coast. In the summer, people are out and about in the city and restaurant patios feel really alive. If you're really into baseball, you can check out a Rockies game and hang out in the city afterwards. Summer in Denver is pretty much the best. You can take a bike tour. There are always really cool festivals and outdoor events. You could do something special like yoga at Red Rocks at Red Rocks Amphitheater. There's always a lot of stuff going on in the summertime. Pre-COVID, I used to always go to an event called Taco Landia, where a bunch of different taco vendors and restaurants fill apart, and you end up trying about 30 different tacos in 90 minutes. It's always a lot of fun. Also, I strongly believe that seeing a concert at Red Rocks Amphitheater by a band that you really love is bucket list worthy and those go down all summer long. While we have a light rail in Denver that goes all the way out to the burbs and covers a pretty vast area, I would highly recommend having a car when you come here to visit. Not only is the light rail expensive, it's not like your typical subway station that makes it really easy and inexpensive to hop all over the city. While it is cool that the light rail can take you way out of Denver and into the suburbs, you will end up with a lot of last mile issues that will have you looking for non-existent scooters, waiting for Ubers or Lyfts, and that can put a damper on your time here. Also, outside of downtown itself, parking in Denver is not so bad compared to other major cities, and you won't have to get places 15 to 20 minutes advance to find a parking spot because you'll generally be able to find one. There are also great apps like Spot Hero and ParkWiz that you can use to find a parking spot in a bind, especially if you're in a busy area. If you're going to be up in the Boulder area, there's an app called Park Mobile that you can download before you get there that will make it a little bit easier to park. 
Since we're Denver Nuggets season ticket holders, I actually use the Spot Hero app every time that we go to a game to find a place to park nearby. Also, speaking of transportation, Colorado Springs, Denver, and Boulder are not right next to each other. Colorado Springs is down here, Denver's right here, and Boulder's right up here. It's roughly an hour from Colorado Springs to Denver, and then depending on where you're at in the city, it might be 30 to 40 minutes for you to get from Denver up to Boulder. I found that a lot of friends come to visit, and they want to visit all three cities for some reason, but they don't realize how far apart they actually are. Definitely take a look at Google Maps and do some planning because the cities are a little bit further apart than you might think. Back to the weather theme, especially if you're coming from the East Coast, I would say that it snows often here, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it snows a lot in terms of volume. I grew up in Boston and East Coasters like to pretend that their weather is the craziest in the United States. Anyone who says that hasn't lived here, parts of the South, or stepped foot in Texas, our weather is way crazier than anything that you see on the East Coast. Snows in May are pretty common. It snows in June sometimes. We can go from 80 degrees one day to 20 degrees the next. We also have these things called bomb cyclones, which are hurricane force winds with snow that knock over the fence in your backyard again. Basically, it can and will snow for about six or seven months out of the year, but you're going to see a lot more three inch snowfalls than you will see 12 inch snowfalls. So while it might snow every week during the winter, it's not all that bad. I drive a two wheel drive car and while I don't take it up to the mountains to go skiing or snowboarding, it's totally fine. Next, while you can see the mountains pretty much all over Denver, they're not that close when it comes to skiing and snowboarding. You could definitely do some awesome hikes and things within an hour of the city, but most of the ski and snowboarding places that you're going to want to visit while you're here are further out from the city than you might think. With zero traffic, it's about 90 minutes to Breckenridge from Denver, and it's about two hours to Vail from Denver, and that's with no traffic. Realistically, you're going to hit traffic in both directions because you're going the same place that everyone else is trying to go. But if you want to go to a more local ski place like Arapahoe Basin, that's about an hour from the city with zero traffic. So while we're definitely close to the mountains for a major city, it might not be as close as it appears in postcards and other pictures you've seen online. Next, while there are definitely higher elevation cities throughout Arizona and Utah and other places like that, the altitude is definitely real, especially if you're planning on doing anything active while you're here. I'm talking about places like New York, LA, Vegas, parts of the South. When you guys come here, if you take a workout class, try to climb the Manitou Incline, do anything active, go on a run, you're going to be feeling it. You'll probably be fine if you go skiing or snowboarding because that's not really hardcore cardio. But even if you go to a spin class, try a CrossFit class, or do anything where you'd normally get out of breath, your lungs might be a little bit on fire. It usually takes about three to six months of living here consistently for that burning feeling in your lungs to go away from the altitude. So if you feel out of breath going up the stairs or walking around, it's not you, it's the altitude, it's not your fault. You're not horribly out of shape, it happens to everyone. So don't be alarmed, but be aware. Definitely drink a lot of water while you're here just to avoid altitude sickness and know that you're probably not gonna be at full beast mode while you're in town. Whether you're coming here for a quick visit or you're considering moving here, I hope that this video gave you some interesting things to know about Denver. If you learned anything new in this video, please give it a like or share it with that friend that you're coming to visit Denver with. Thanks so much for watching and have a great trip to Denver and maybe I'll see you out here.